What are your passions? What are your hobbies? If you're married, what are your spouse's passions and hobbies? And how often do they align with each other? And are there ever times when they maybe cause problems? Well, what is the right way to move forward with things like that in our marriage. David and Tracy Sellers are with us again from Vows to Keep Marriage Ministry, VowsToKeep.com. And we're talking today about being a champion for your spouse's causes. Get out the, you're going to put on a cheerleading outfit now. <laughs> we talked about it. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I think when we get married, we're all looking for something. A lot of times we're looking for that approval. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of husbands are, are really wishing and hoping that their wives are going to be their champion and be their cheerleader. Um, other times, we're looking for someone to pursue something with us. When we get married, we instantly elect this person to be, whether they know it or not, <laughs> to be our, a champion of our causes with us. Yes. God's Word says in First Thessalonians 2 that we've been entrusted with the gospel, and we've been entrusted not to please man with that, but to please God. And I think the key word here is who tests our hearts. God is the one that tests our hearts. So if he was looking at our hearts today and looking at our pursuits, would they be one that would glorify him? And would the pursuit of our marriage also be one that would glorify him? And what would our pursuits say about God? Would they say that he's a wonderful savior that people should pursue or that maybe he's just a giant candy dispensing machine in the sky that we go to mm. when we actually want something? Like you said, Jennifer, there's different hobbies that we can claim as our own, and we really want our spouse to get on board with that. And some of those aren't wrong. They're just preferences or things that we find fun to do. There's some things, though, that we pursue that really are wrong that need to be reevaluated. Maybe you're climbing the corporate ladder, but you're doing it at the expense of your family. Mm. Well, that's wrong, and we shouldn't build a marriage foundation on that. Instead, we should be pursuing God's kingdom, and that should be our marriage foundation. It's, it's an interesting topic in marriage because a lot of husbands and wives don't like to pursue each other's passions. Mm -hmm. And it's not because like I'm all consumed with pursuing building God's kingdom, but rather, you know, I think my cause is better. Like, of course my cause is better. That's why I love it, right? But if you're thinking about your spouse and, and you probably often have had this thought, like, why aren't they getting on board with what I'm doing? Why would they be so isolating? You know, we hear those kind of statements. Usually the same kind of people that are saying that are also saying the same thing about God. Why isn't, yeah. you know, I, I've asked and God hasn't given. Why, why is that? And we're going to read some verses that talk about um, what we ask for. And, and, you know, people oftentimes take some of those request type things. I've, I've asked for something, God, have, why haven't you given? very much out of context. So we're going to talk about some of those verses in just a minute here. But I think naively we've come to, to a place where we, as married people, expect that not only is God going to support us, of course, but our spouse should be on board. And we get very irritated when they're not. So when we look at this and we kind of pull the lens back, I think it's easy for us to see that when our cause is something that glorifies God, He's very supportive of that. Mm -hmm. Those verses that say, ask for anything in my name and I'll give it to you, don't really apply when we say, okay, Lord, I want the biggest house and I want to be rich or fill in the blank, whatever your desire is. If it's a selfish desire, that's not the kind of prayer that God is asking for. But when we take up our spouse's cause and we say, Lord, help me to love my spouse the best way that I can. Now that's a prayer that he's definitely going to answer because he's called us to serve them. He's called us to love them and he wants us to emulate him. And this, it's with a heart desire that says, I'm not doing it for a payoff for myself. I'm doing this because you've asked me to, God, and because I want to love them with your love. But in the end, you actually do get a reward from that. It is so rewarding to serve. And it actually might surprise you because when you start to take up your spouse's cause, they might be totally shocked, <laughs> but they may be energized to reciprocate and start to take up your cause. Now, I, am, I want to preface by saying I am not a perfect wife by any way, shape, or form, but I can remember a key point in my marriage several years ago when I really was praying that God would, would draw me to what my husband's causes mm -hmm. were so I could be that champion. And then I remember getting excited about things that personally were not mine, mm -hmm. but I just felt so much like I needed to be in line mm -hmm. with what, what God was calling Dan to do at that point, yeah. and that was where I needed to be. But, you know, fortunately in that period of time, God was calling him 
for key things, but sometimes our spouses are not going in the direction that God wants. They are, you know, um, sports or the corporate ladder or something is becoming their God. Mm -hmm. So what does a spouse do at that point when it's not a godly thing Pursuit. that, that pers yeah, they're pursuing? Yeah, I, I totally, I totally get what you're saying. I mean, that, that is something that is a real challenge because here we are saying you should get on board with what your spouse wants and, and yet if they're doing something that's out there, well, I think the Bible calls us in those cases to admonish our spouse, um, to, to help steer them, to help guide them. And for many spouses that are experiencing this, um, it's where a husband or a wife has basically said, you know, I'm not necessarily saying no to God, but I'm not really, he's not really a factor in my daily decision. They wouldn't mm -hmm. say that out loud, but it's, it's the evidence we see. Other times, that person has maybe never accepted the Lord as our Savior. And I think we have to be really careful in those times to make sure that we don't take on the role of the Holy Spirit. That's not our job. That God, is a tough thing to do. It is. It is. I, I <laughs> we think wives always know it's better. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, well, That's when actions speak louder than words, for sure. That is absolutely the case. When we're willing to present Christ through our actions, um, when we're willing to, to let our words be secondary to our actions, I think we see that that, that goes a lot farther.